I did a fun and crazy video a couple of weeks ago uh, about what I'd wear and pack if I had to travel to a safe place when the world went pear-shaped in the summertime. Uh, I'm going to do this one, another one just for fun, <laughs> but a, a similar premise in the winter. How are you going? Welcome back to Brutlosophy and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people. So the premise this week is another cataclysmic event, nuclear war, the zombie apocalypse, but this time in winter. <laughs> Again, I'm going to assume that it's not going to be uh, great to stay in the city and I need to look to get to somewhere fast where I can hide out for a while before creeping back into a nearby town uh, for resupply. Uh, I'll assume that I'll leave early before hysteria clogs the roads, which means I can get most of the way in, in a car, but fuel will not be available be, uh, except for what I've already got in my tank. This time though, I have my wife's small VW Golf, which with a full tank can go about 600 kilometers. Uh, and the place I want to get to is about 650 kilometers, so it will involve a 50K walk. Now, I'm thinking my destination will be some camping grounds in the middle of the forests that I know quite well in the uh, southwest Esperance region of Western Australia. 600 kilometres driving will get me to just about where I have to leave the road anyway uh, because of the terrain, uh, and there should be about 50 k's to walk in the bush to get to this isolated spot. The, uh, the whole of the Esperance region is uh, a very low density population. It, I think there's about four and a half thousand people in an area of about 55,000 square kilometers. So I should be able to hide away for a few weeks before I head back to sneak into the town of Esperance for some resupply. Uh, the terrain of that last 50 kilometers walk though is pretty tough. A steep mountainous area with uh, rocky outcrops and tight coastal scrub that's pretty dense and quite hard to walk through. I'm thinking that uh, that 50k walk will probably take me about four days. Water, I think, will be easy to find, and uh, if I can hunt, you know, small animals like bandicoots and quolls that are nocturnal and don't run very fast, food should be plenty. But I will also pack some dried food and pack a water bottle for during the travel. I'm going to assume this time that the world goes splat during the winter. The temperature will be between 5 degrees Celsius to 17 Celsius. That's about 40 to 65 Fahrenheit. Now, to us, that's cold. Okay, let's do this. What boots will I wear? I need tough, thick leather, protective boots because it will be cold and wet, and the terrain will involve climbing over sharp rocks. Grip is not, you know, particularly too much of an issue. A, a sturdy outsole, I think, is more important than, say, you know, commando lugged soles for grip. I did consider the Truman uh, in Java Wax Flesh. Pretty tough little boot. Uh, in the wax rough out and with the commando sole, the stitch down construction is certainly tough enough. You know, but after a few years of wear that I've had these now, I am still finding the collapsed unstructured toe box just a little tight and uncomfortable over my toes. So I settled on the uh, White's MP boots in cinnamon wax flesh. It has a day night sole, so not particularly grippy in uh, uh, wet weather over smooth tiles. But honestly, amongst the rocky terrain, I don't think that really matters. The rubber compound itself is pretty tough when it matters. Uh, it isn't going to crack or split, especially coupled with the uh, already thick leather midsole. The cinnamon wax flesh uppers will be water resistant and also pretty tough being a rough out. This fits me really comfortably and the arch support for walking and climbing is exceptional. I'm not going to take a second boot, of course, because of light lightweightness. But if I did, I would probably take another PNW uh, boot, most suited to that country. In this case, the NYX collaboration with Parkhurst. Thick Chrome XL leather, super supportive around the axle, fantastic arch support, and again, a flat sole, but no worries. Let me know what you'd wear in the conditions I've described. Which one would you choose? Now, just quickly now, this is a boot channel, but I'll carry on with clothing. On to pants. I think the temperatures and terrain are calling for good old-fashioned denim. And if it's tough denim, I'm picking the uh, Sanferized 100% cotton denim with no spandex or elastane. I'll wear this pair of the 14-ounce 
uh, a cotton salvage denim jeans from Flint and Tinder. This is, long name, the American-made Vidalia salvage jeans. I love how old-fashioned and thick this is. The comfortable stretch is not going to be necessary uh, as the thickness here for durability. It's a straight fit, so it's roomy and comfortable when climbing up steep slopes. The traditional five-pocket design uh, gives roomy pockets uh, to stuff full of EDC gear if you have to, and the rivets and the stitching make it a tough pair of pants. As for my uh, second pair or, or choice for pants, I think I might pack this pair of Timberland cargo pants. Not in fashion these days, but when the world goes kablooey, fashion doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is the thick cotton twill and all these cargo pockets uh, for carrying extra things that you want to get to quickly or that you know, won't fit in your bag. Both the dark denim and the khaki colour will blend in really well in the coastal bush uh, if I have to hide away. As for the tops, I think in the cold, layering may be the key. You want to stay warm but at the same time be able to strip off to regulate temperature when you're walking. So I'm going to go for a base layer, mid layer and outer layer approach. My base layers are likely to be short sleeved merino t-shirts or uh, this merino a half zip base layer from Australian outdoors uh, brand Kathmandu. Uh, this merino is antibacterial so it won't smell after four or five days of constant wear on my skin. Uh, it dries very quickly and it wicks sweat. Uh, it's also very light against your skin. Uh, as a mid layer, I'll take this merino wool, again merino, uh, zip up top from New Zealand adventure gear company Icebreaker. Uh, again, all the properties that merino brings uh, this is slightly heavier than the base. Uh, it zips right up to the neck uh, with pockets at the waist for hand warming. Uh, while I won't wear this next item, I will probably pack it. This is a New Zealand made wool jacket made from some very warm possum fur. It's lightweight, extremely warming as a top or mid layer. It also has uh, waist high hand warming pockets. The disadvantage is that unlike merino, it's not particularly temperature regulating, so uh, if it warms up, it doesn't actually cool you down. I think something like this would be useful for the very cold nights though. Finally, the top uh, waterproof layer. I initially thought of a light technical puffer jacket, but I think with the tough scratchy bush that I have to push past in the walk, I'd prefer a tougher outer layer to protect myself. So I chose this flint and tinder waxed Hudson jacket. It's warm, it's waterproof, it's got plenty of pockets, uh, including this uh, poacher's pocket at the back. It's not light, but you know, 5 to 10 degrees centigrade, it is cold. <laughs> uh, I will also take this kefir scarf. Now, as I said in the last video, this is not a political choice. I've had this for about 10 years now and I found it very useful as a head cover against sun and wind, uh, ex extra warmth as a shawl or neck scarf, and even extra cover, because it's so big, uh, as an extra layer either in or on top of my sleeping bag. And now I'll carry a waterproof cap with me and packed away will be a beanie for warmth. Uh, other clothing? Definitely merino boot socks. As for gear, uh, I'm going to take equipment to make traps to catch the uh, small marsupials that come out at nights in the area, uh, along with plenty of uh, fire-making equipment. It is more than likely the forest campsite that I'm thinking of is going to be wet, so I'll need paraffin-based fire starters. Uh, I'll take a ground sheet or a tarp that I can string up for a shelter or uh, put on the ground and put a warm sleeping bag on it, and obviously I'll bring a sleeping bag. I'll take as much dried food and water bottles as I can carry, although water will be easy to find, uh, and in case it's dirty, I will take water purifying tablets. Of course, uh, EDC gear like knives, multi-tools, torches, they're all going to be in my pack. And talking about packs, I'm going to need a waterproof tough bag with plenty of room and uh, comfortable to carry. I'm going to choose this Scout backpack from Dale's Leatherworks, uh, made from Seidel uh, double shot leather. So waterproof and plenty tough against hard bushes and rocks. As you can see, there's also plenty of space. Anyway, there you are. Um, this is just for a bit of fun, really. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Please click on like if you did. Um, a few weeks ago, I took a look at what I'd wear and pack if things went wrong in the summertime. And uh, if I had to walk through a couple of hundred k's of 
a bush going into the desert. Uh, take that with this video uh, on a shorter but harder walk in winter and pair them together and you have your survival ideas. <laughs> no, not really, just for fun. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tell me what you would wear or pack depending on the terrain and conditions that you might face. And don't forget to click on like and subscribe. Next week, uh, normal transmission is resuming and we're going to take a look at uh, RM Williams lace-up boot. And the week after that, the one you've been waiting for, the Jim Green Nungzan boot. Until then, take care and see you again soon.